This is the HTC U23 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you won't need to disassemble the phone to replace those. There are 14 Phillips screws that need to be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on the top plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines, as well as this plastic piece on the side. The LED flash is located here, as well as the NFC antenna. Here's the wireless charging coil, and there's an area of graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. We can see some more antenna lines drawn on the speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter over the opening. And the haptic feedback or linear vibrator motor is located underneath the speaker assembly. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There are also three coaxial cables on the right side of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. The lock on this connector needs to be lifted up for it to release the cable. Also the copper tape covering the front facing camera connector needs to be peeled off in order to disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. Taking a closer look at the main board, there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 108 megapixel primary lens, and a 5 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone underneath the shield, 
And there's copper tape on the front shield to help transfer heat. The proximity sensor is located on the back, as well as more copper tape on the back shields and thermal paste. Once the copper tape has been peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of the RAM and processor, as well as some more thermal paste on these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. Looking at the subboard, the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the other side. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the charger port. Here's a better look at the charger port, and there's a black rubber gasket around the charger port itself. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tops provided to help us pry it off, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4600 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate, and then the screws on the top plastic cover, at which point you'd be able to disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, as well as the cable leading to the charger port, and then pry the battery off giving you access to the screen cable. And then you'd have to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we can see a fairly large copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. The white coaxial cable is connected to an antenna board on the bottom corner. This flex cable is for the fingerprint reader on this side, and the one underneath is for the volume keys. If you need to replace either of those, there are three Phillips screws on the inside of the frame which you need to remove, and then you'd be able to pull those out. Here's a look at the headphone jack, and there's a rubber gasket around the opening. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.